Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are here with two folks that probably don't need any introduction, Jim Obergefell and James Black from the uh, James Black from the Family Equality. How are you both? Doing well, how are you? Doing very okay. well, thanks. So glad, uh, before we even get started uh, and talking about things, I'm so jealous because the two of you um, are in Sonoma and uh, because Jim, you have a whole li a whole world in in the in the in life in the world of uh, wineries and equal with equality is it equality vines, correct? Equality vines, and I wasn't a wine person other than enjoying drinking it. But as a consequence of being in the fight for marriage equality, uh, my business partner and I launched a business that supports organizations fighting for equality with yeah. premium wines. So. We're working on a project to benefit family equality. So James is out here as well right now. I love hearing that. And I will I will leave that by saying that and I, you are in great company because uh, uh, just a few days ago, I kept seeing all these pictures on social media where you're with my friend Gary Saperstein from out in the vineyard up in Oregon uh, in, in the whole world of wine. I think you guys did like one of their first uh, wine dinners of some sort. Correct. So it was a wine dinner um, hosted by the restaurant Bosa. Um, that supports out central Oregon because this past weekend was their winter pride. And Gary has homes both in Sonoma and Bend. And he said he was going to start slowing down and not be involved as much in Bend. And he lied. So he, <laughs> he made this happen and it was a great time. Yeah. But I love all that. But um, I think there's, uh, we could probably go on for hours with all the all the the topics that uh, you two can talk about, especially in 2024. Well, well, our focus today is on a very special project. Uh, it's called the Just Married Project, and um, and uh, it's this. It's a podcast. It's a book. It's a film series. But it's really all about kind of preserving marriage equality's heroic love stories. That's the theme. And uh, but Jim, you were one of the very first folks that uh, that was uh, interviewed as one of your stories. Correct. So Frankie Frankeny, who conceived of this project. Well, 13 years ago, and it's something that she has been committed to doing and something she just wanted to make happen, you know, with Obergefell v. Hodges, she thought, you know, this this is a story that should be part of this eight, eight episode docuseries. So she reached out, we met, and she explained what the project was. And number one, she wanted to know if I would be open to having John's and my story included as one of one of the stories in the series. And my answer, of course, was an easy yes. <laughs> and then over time, it, it became something where I wanted to be more involved and I became a producer on, on the series. So that allows me to be more involved in spreading awareness of the project, finding people to be involved, um, investors in the project. So for me, it's been a great experience to, to be part of this project. And it, and it isn't just my story, which I love. And it also isn't just stories about lawsuits. It's about those couples who, through just being open and honest and the things they did in their lives that helped move our society forward towards acceptance and embracing marriage equality. So it's a great project and I'm really thrilled to be part of it. Well, this is great. And even uh, before introducing James properly, I will say that uh, I saw I saw James in uh, Dallas at, uh, at presenting at, uh, it's called Unleash, the Unleash Expo. And, uh, but it was amazing because that was the very first time that I've seen you on stage and heard your story. And, uh, and I have a feeling that there's a lot you could tell us about because, uh, uh, but first just kind of like curious about how like you know, family quality, what the, what's that about? How that kind of ties into the project here. Yeah, and I'm sorry that we didn't get to meet in, in Dallas and so we will get to meet in person at some point. But, you know, I think about the, the story of the dads who founded Family Equality. And these were a group of uh, brave gay dads who were fighting for their right to parent their own children. And many of them were coming out of straight marriages. Yeah. And I believe that they can only imagine not only, you know, parenting their children without barriers, but but having the ability to marry the person that they love someday. That was just beyond probably their imaginations. And so when you think about where we are with family quality, and we're still fighting for the right to family, to me, it was the perfect partnership. You know, it was the the right thing to do. And in terms of even my my own story, my wife and I married in Canada before marriage equality was the law of the land. And before then, I really didn't have the history, I didn't have the the representation, I didn't know much before then. 
And so thinking about the storytelling and the folks that Jim just mentioned, it's just important that we continue to uplift our stories, the history, not only the legal battles, but the love and the bravery that these many of these people and these couples have been demonstrated over time. We have to preserve that. And to me, that aligns perfectly with Family Equality's mission to ensure that everyone can create a family without barriers. Yeah. Well, especially this year, I mean, I think it's, uh, uh, I don't think anybody could have predicted how important it would be, you know, first with the Roe v. Wade being overturned, and then the talk that's out there about uh, our our marriage rights being overturned as well sometime in the near future. And do you, do you, how do you guys feel about, you know, just the, the poignancy of everything you've worked on up to this point now kind of coming together for this? This is, I'll say that this is the, <laughs> it's it's critical. This is the time. And I think about when Roe versus Wade was overturned and we heard from so many families who are married couples who have children and their children were afraid that their parents' marriages were going to end. Mm -hmm. Their children were afraid that their families were going to be broken uh, broken up, that they were not going to have what they know as family. And if, you, if we don't realize this, many of um, our children, children who have LGBTQ plus parents, only know their parents to be married. So it is important that we understand that, that we preserve that, that we fight for that. And I can say at Family Equality, we are pivoting what I'll say our, our policy work to ensure that we can be in the fight, not only for family, but for marriage, to defend marriage. Yeah. You know, for me, I, I see this clear connection between my fight for marriage equality and what family equality does, because at the heart of it, John's in my lawsuit against the state of Ohio it was about our family. It was about our right to exist as a family. And to me, that's just the perfect perfect continuation of the work or the perfect basis in a lot of ways of the work that family equality does. And the fact that our right to marry is under attack, you know, to have Supreme Court justices put in writing that they think this should be overturned, it's terrifying a lot of people. So I think James really said it right. This this is a moment when we have to keep working. We have to be focused and smart about what we do to ensure that our right to marry isn't taken away and to, to ensure that the families that we have formed because of marriage or in any way we form them, that they continue to experience the, the same rights, the same respect that any other family enjoys. So we are really at a critical time for our rights in this country. And family equality is one of the one of the things that gives me hope, just yeah. being involved uh, with this organization and knowing the great work that they do to fight for family and for everyone to enjoy and experience the joy that comes with family. Yeah. And you know, Matt, I just want to add something that Jim just said that the family aspect of you, you and John's relationship, that you were a family. And I want LGBTQ plus folks to know that family does not only mean folks who have children. And we really need to understand that family is is, is broad, family is expansive. And even at Family Equality, we've, we've gotten really intentional around what family means um, within our community. And family comes in all shapes and sizes, all forms, all compositions. And when we think about that we are in a fight for family, I want us to think about family in broad terms, because I hear some of um, folks in our community say, well, you know, I'm not a family. I don't have kids. I don't want kids. But you and your partner or you and your 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 boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, are a family. And as LGBTQ plus people, that right to family, whether it's chosen, uh, we yeah. have to fight for that. We have to include that in our fight and we have to fight for it. And whether or not there is a marriage license involved, you still are a family. And that's an important thing. Marriage isn't for everyone. It was for John and me, and it is for a lot of couples, but we need the right to make that decision and to, to enter into that relationship and to have it recognized. But that isn't for everyone. So I think that's another thing that people should always keep in mind. Family isn't just brought about because of marriage. Family is the people you choose to love, the people you choose to care for and to put above all else in your life. Well, that's the way my life started, you know, just interjecting a, on the personal side. I was I was with my first husband slide, but when we couldn't get married in uh, 1992. And it's from 1992 for 20 years, we we um, we we identified as a family just the way you described. And yeah. uh, and both he and I were the best of friends. And uh, but he is uh, he has a 
he has a current husband. I'm I'm now married uh, legally with a, with a, with a husband, and I could just tell you the and that was all we did that around 2013, and um, I could just tell you the the feeling of mm-hmm. being able to be legally recognized and married. I, I I can personally attest to the fact that um it, it's a it's a it's an amazing feeling that um I would I would be devastated to have that ever taken away. I got goosebumps when you said that, Matt, because that's that's what I'm talking about. There's this instant feeling, recognition, and respect when you see, when you hear the word marriage. And as Jim said, whether it's for you or not, we need to have that choice. Yeah, yeah. And Matt, you you really just took me back to. John's and my marriage in that medical jet on an airport tarmac. And yeah. when we said I do, and when when we made our, our marriage public and legal, it changed everything. Yeah. I mean, we felt different. We felt better. We, we felt more complete. Yeah. And one of the things I refuse to give up is my right to call myself John's widower. Yeah. That's a word that carries meaning. I'm not going to give up that right. And I'm not going to allow someone else to take that away from me. Yeah. Well, it also eliminates so many of those variables, uh, you know, powers of attorney for medical reasons or, um, or, you know, uh, what, you know, what happens when you, when you are a widow and you pass away, someone passes away and what happens to all that stuff in the home and all that. Well, you know, we had to think through every one of those little details and try to put all, you know, make sure it was covered. And um, mm-hmm. it's really nice to know that so much of that is kind of, it, it's in, it's in, it's ingrained in law that's been taking care of traditional heterosexual married couples for many years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I believe there's over a thousand or so benefits that um, come along with the, with being legally married, and we are absolutely um, should have those benefits. Right, and not to mention just that joy of saying this is my spouse. Yeah. Yes. And more than it means something legally. Or this is my husband. This is my wife. Yes, and exactly. I'll just say, when I go back to the kids, our children are um, aware of the fight for marriage as much as nine year olds can can understand that. But they have because they're aware of it, and they know Jim. They, they call him Mister Jim because they know Jim and and what Jim um, has done for our community. They are proud when they walk into a different space or classroom, and they say, "Mama and mommy are married." And it it allows them to feel equal to their peers who have heterosexual parents or different sex um, uh, parents. So it's it's really important. Um, even our kids benefit from it in so many ways. Your organization is such a personal one. I'll also leave the personal notes uh, at ending that it, it, it warms my heart whenever I see photos where you guys are together with Scott Gatz from Q Digital. And I see all the things that he, his, his family and their company, all the things that they do just sort of like, you know, embracing and being a part of everything you all are doing. So I, I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. We're trying to, and not, I say not trying to, we will, we're creating a better world for LGBTQ plus families. Yep. Period. For everything we've talked about um, with this project, I know the film is not out yet, but um, but you, there's a book, there's a podcast and uh, and so forth. So there are ways that folks can kind of start to number one, hear these stories, see and touch and kind of get a sense of the work you guys have done so far. Correct. So um the website is justmarried.us. Yeah. You can access that website, keep up to date with what's happening. But correct, we will have a podcast series that goes along with the series. There'll be this coffee table book, 100 Years of, of Queer Families. Yeah. And that's really the, the the great connection with family equality. You know, this is all about families. Yeah. Whether or not it was a legal marriage or just a couple with kids, with or without kids, who formed that family and were visible and were willing to say, this is who we are and we we deserve the right to exist. So this, the coffee table book, the podcast, the documentary series, really just as James said, these are stories we have to save. These are stories that we need to share. Yeah. So for me, I think that's one of the most important things is sharing our history as a community, sharing our stories as a community, because that's how we connect with others. Yeah. All that visibility, one one story at a time. Yes. Yes. I love this. Well, I think it's amazing that you two were able to take some of your time and kind of tell us uh, in our audience a bit about this project. And uh, I very much look forward to connecting with you both in the real world sometime soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, Matt. Absolutely. Like, thank you so much, Matt. Again, look forward to seeing you in person at yeah. some point as well. Thank you all. And it feels-
Thank you. So good.